All right, so somebody just showed me the um, Lord Sear Rakim interview. Let's get it real straight. All right, let's get it real straight, real fast. Lior Cohen, my manager at the time, asked me to write a rhyme for Eric B and Rakim for the Follow the Leader album. I wrote Step Into the AM. Rakim had no idea I was writing the rhyme. Eric B had no idea I was writing rhyme. The only person I knew was Lior Cohen. All right? As soon as Eric heard the first, he didn't even hear the title he hung up on me and then called Leo and screamed on him for four hours. The Lord Sear, for you to tell fucking Rock Kim that I wrote a rhyme for him and what, and yo, fuck you, Sear, trying to get fucking little fucking Sean for your bullshit ass show. I'm so fucking mad at you right now. You're my fucking man. You could have called me and asked me what the fucking deal was. Or you could have watched the Vlad interview and seen what the truth was. Rock Kim didn't know. Nobody knew. Yo, fuck you, man. That's bullshit. So he's mad. <laughs> to say the least. Because Lord Sear either deliberately screwed that up or accidentally screwed that up. But when you do something of that nature on your platform and that show... You're going to have to make sure that is correct. You cannot mess that up. Even I knew it was wrong when the way he was saying it to Rock Kim. I'm like, we went over this before. This is like old, old news. When everybody, the majority of you guys found out about it once he brought it up. I think, I don't know if it was Vlad or something, but he's brought this up many a times before in the past. But Rakim didn't know. He didn't know what was going on at the time. He's like, what? So the, thing, the story goes like this, in case you didn't know. There was, uh, I want to say, either Let the Rhythm Hit Him album during that period of time where Ra was not, they were not coming up with the album Rob was taking his sweet time and the studios is like rushing to try to get this project out. And they like, what's going on? Like, does he need help with rhymes? Look, we could write the rhymes for him. If and he's like, nah, he's got his process. You know, he's going through making sure the rhymes are where they supposed to be. And, you know, Rakim is just taking his sweet merry old time. So being studio guys and label heads, the bosses decided to come up with an idea. <laughs> and and Leo Cohen, who's over here at YouTube, he knows. He asked, search, could he write a rhyme for Rakim? Cohen's greedy, man. <laughs> Leo Cohen is greedy. He's greedy as uck in his own language. So Leo Cohen is thinking greed, greed, greed. You know, we got to get this stuff out while the people want it. Let's get this stuff done. Let's get, let's get it out. So, definitely, they asked. And it was just like Search. You heard it right from Search's mouth. So, that was the process leading up as the reasons as to why it was even brought to the table. This is a known story that have been heard throughout Hollywood. So, I mean, throughout the industry, it's, it wasn't a big deal then, really wasn't a big deal now. You know, um, and I'm quite sure Rogers didn't understand what was going on. So that was that. In case people was like, hey, man, what's going on there between Search and Rock Him? And people sensationalizing stuff. But Lord Sear, man, gosh. This is what, that's why it blows my mind, because it came from Lord Sear. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you on Shady 4 and 5. And I'm like, you on Shady 4 and 5. And you got this show. And for you to say that. Wow. That really was shocking. So.
CMO. Lord Seer and Surge know each other absolutely. And to me, it just was unbelievable that Seer would miss, you know, misunderstand that. Well, a lot of people who listen to Shade 4 5, <clears throat> they listen to Seer. Impeach the presidents, uh, the honey drippers, tough city records. <laughs> Man, dude, it was crazy at that time. We had the best era of music, dude. <laughs> I feel bad for people who grew up in the, like, 2000s. Gosh, dude, you guys didn't have anything. <laughs> I feel bad. You guys didn't have much at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever think that Rock him could beat uh Biggie in a in a rap battle? <sighs> it's weird to say. Listen. Here it is. The thing with uh, Kane and Rockham, if they were to battle, because I know that's where y'all going. I'm trying to read all y'all questions and give y'all the answers at the same time. But listen, um, and for the rest of you guys, click the link in the description box, right where it says Super Chat. And you can leave a donation there and leave your message. Um... <clears throat> Kane should be able to best rock him in a battle. He would be a heavy favorite in that battle. And the reason why he would be a heavy favorite in the battle is because Kane, unlike many other artists in the game, is more like Jay-Z. These are direct rappers. You know, there's there's very few indirect lines and bars that are used. If they come at you, they come at you direct. Now, It's like what they call conversation rap. <laughs> it's like he's talking directly to you. Rakim, science. He's more like a Nas. They come scientifically. Man, they come so perpendicular, you know. And you got to be clever with the bars and the structures of it. And when you people hear the rhymes and the bars and you're putting it together, that's to them, that's what determines a better MC. And listening to how the structure of the bars are and the words he's using, this is normally who determines who wins and loses a battle. So to rock him, that's the approach he would take to it. And he would lose in public opinion against somebody like Kane because Kane will come directly at him and more simpler, witty and simpler, but more direct so that the people listening can get it on first listen. And they'll be like, oh, Kane smoked him. Ra was dope. He said a bunch of dope things. I got to figure it out. But they were dope. 
but Cain did it. But you gotta understand, Ra is also different. He does have the potential, like Nas, to have the element of surprise and be able to flip the script. And next thing you know, we'll, we'll all be in shock and awe because he did something different. That's what happened with Ether. Everybody said, well, Nas can't win because Nas is going to be too witty and Nas will be the one who won, but he won't work in, you know, amongst the general public. Then you saw what happened, right? We all saw what happened. Nas shocked the world and did it simply, made a simple rhyme, went to Jay's level, made a simple direct rap that was potent. And it was just, just, it was ether. <laughs> and the rest is history. So that possibility out there remained for Rakim. If that makes any sense to you guys. Okay. Um, MC Search need to sit down somewhere. He hadn't had a hit in forever. He never was big. Third base was a bunch of bums. You know this, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't use the words bums, but nah, I wouldn't say that. They had, they had a hit album. They first album was hitting. Blacks, whites, Latinos, they played third base. I'm sorry. <laughs> and here it comes with my song. You know that? So here it comes. Mm, mm. I said, here it comes. Hit it on. Dun, set it on. Search for rap, man. Live at the barbecue. Uh, it's The thing with Search is he sold himself out to be on the other side of the envelope when it came to hip-hop. And I felt like he was a man of two faces. And a lot of people saw that. Prince Paul saw it. A lot of people were like, yo, man. <laughs> He's the guy to come and hang out with the brothers. Yo, man, yo, you know what I'm saying? What's your boy MC Surge? And then when he goes back around the family, mother, father, hi. <laughs> you know, he's back to being his regular self and his regular lifestyle. That's been Surge, and that's how he was in the industry. He was the MC rapper on one side, then he's working with corporate and... But, you know, the record label, the execs, you know, they had the Jewish connection. Ding. So there you go. You know, they all like, hey, you're rapping with them, but you're not one of them. <laughs> right. I mean, look, it was, if anybody was white and rapping, they were Jewish. <laughs> Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys album was on hit. Brass, Monkey, everything. They had black fans before they had white fans. Then they say, you know what? These white fans are coming in to see the Beastie Boys. Put them with Run DMC. Slap them on tour. Put LL on that tour. <sighs> Man. <laughs> ah, that's crazy. Oh, everybody had that poster. Does everybody remember that poster with Run DMC and the Beastie Boys on it? If you didn't have that tour poster, you were slacking. <laughs> in our era, I'm talking to people in our era, because then we had posters on the wall, like real hip-hop posters. I had them all. Yeah, man, I'm a real fan of this. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's a bill. I thought that was a question. <laughs> that's a that's a bill. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean Sprint? What is he trying to say? Okay. Ella May and Ella May, I, I mean, yeah, I guess she's she's like, man, I think she's the cutest girl and the best in right now in hip hop and she don't really get her props. Her R and B music is refreshing and it's different and unique from a lot of other artists. Yes. It's, yeah, I like her music. I mean, I don't really see it as a something that sets apart. I think her demo album that she had with those other songs, a lot of those that didn't make the album, they're like on a mixtape or something. Those were very, very creative. And I don't know where those are or where they put them at. On what CD, but yeah. That's definitely something to listen to. I like LMA. Because she relates to even, like, the hood chicks and the mom that goes to work. So the Section 8 girl like her and the mom that goes to work. <laughs> Working mom likes her. Dudes like her. And the hoochies like her. So she's got a good market. Plus, they know you. Well, here's the thing. Um, I think LMA and DJ Mustard, that combination works. They shouldn't break that up. I like those two together as far as business. I like it. Ah, uh, the best R&B singer right now. Who got it? Trey Songz or Chris Brown? I'm riding with Breezy. Um, I would say Chris Brown right now. I don't know what's up with Trey Songz. To be honest, I couldn't tell you nothing about Trey Songz <laughs> that would t make me. I mean, I heard his music. I mean, that Power remix, but. It's not like his, you know, his first album that got him hot. Well, it wasn't his first album, but it was like his third album. But that album that got him, like, going off and they compared him to Usher then. And he had, like, the Confessions. That was, like, the new Confessions album. What was that? Make him say, ah. Make him say, ah. I don't know if that that might be Usher <laughs> or Trey Song or some one of them, but yeah, that song got him. Make him say "Ah" was almost like that song that for no, what's the name was screaming yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm taking Breezy. Breezy can sing and Breezy can dance. So if you go see Breezy, Breezy gonna be on the flow. Like Breezy didn't took one too many pills. <laughs> he didn't he didn't went a whole 360 <laughs> and spun around. Now he got blonde hair, tats all over the place. And I'm like, what the heck did happen to Breezy? You know, looking weird as I don't know what. <laughs> Way different than what we first saw. He was a cool, nerdy kid back in the day hanging out with Bow Wow when Bow Wow had five bucks. And now, I don't know. So, that's where I'm at with that.
If I was to rap, who would I rap with? Oh, Uncle Murder. <laughs> More than 50 Cent? Yes, Uncle Murder. <laughs> Uncle Murder, that's, to me, Uncle Murder's that guy. You know, if I had to find a guy that I'm like, this is the guy I want to work with, it would be Uncle Murder all day. I'm like, I, first time I heard Uncle Murder, I will never forget it. A day in my life, I said, that guy's for real. He ain't pretending. This is a guy right here. I, this guy here. He didn't really did some things. <laughs> <laughs> they might be listening real close to him. You know, I'm like, that's a real dude. I know the real guy from somebody who's just, you know, creating some art. That dude ain't creating no art. <laughs> I ain't talking about something that just went down on the block. <laughs> and, and he ain't changed it. Now the whole world, everybody, I never forget. They were telling me Drake was in play at the time. Drake was just coming up. And it was uh, Young L, what's the name? Young L.A., T.I., and all that. Everybody was trying to be pretty and making all this pretty music. And it wasn't in 50 and no one kind of out there no more. The G Unit, nobody's really rocking with the unit at the time no more. So everybody just wanted to be pretty and make this pretty club music. And baby, I love you. You can have whatever you want. And all this stuff was going on. And finally, it was one rapper out there that was not with this commercialized new era of hip-hop. And it was Uncle Murder. And when I heard him, I said, oh, yes, he's the one. <laughs> he, he is that guy. <laughs> And sure enough, he was never go. Jay signed him only to, for, for protection. Like, look, I'm signing this dude because I got some problems that I can't have my name attached to. <laughs> I'm getting him. I got a problem. I'm going to get Uncle Murr. <laughs> There's some problem up there on the east side. Oh, I'm going to get Uncle Murr. <laughs> I got a problem with this set. I'm grabbing Uncle Murder. <laughs> He's from Brooklyn to East New York. <laughs> Everybody's talking. It's Brooklyn versus Harlem. No, it ain't. It's just Dar it's just J Dill versus Dame and the dip set. It ain't a burrow thing. Well, not at least yet. <laughs> but boy, I can feel something coming. I know I ain't the only one that's like, okay. <laughs> Ooh, man, that's some Uncle Bert. <laughs> he was telling the truth. They see me in the streets, they be like, what up, uh, Uncle Mert? <laughs> you got it, but you overcharging people for that work. I get it. <laughs> you get it for the Lolo, but them prices is woof. I'm like, yeah, that's the motherfucking truth. <laughs> Do you know why I had to go to get it? <laughs> I'll be feeling like Frank Lucas before he starts snitching. <laughs> <laughs> a bird, baby. Oh man. All right, let me see. What other questions y'all got? Then I'm gonna get up out of here. Rihanna, Beyonce, or Sierra? Which one would you sleep with? Okay. Okay, kill, sleep with, just, and then marry. I wouldn't marry none of them. <laughs> I wouldn't marry either one of them, but if I had to marry one without a doubt, Beyonce. 
Uh, one that would just kill off Sierra. Uh, <laughs> sleep with Rihanna. That I wasn't too hard at all. <laughs> it could be in any order. <laughs> I mean, B, I would definitely marry the one with the less sex partners. <laughs> and then with Rihanna, yeah, that's that's nothing but, I don't even think we going to dinner. <laughs> then, then the other one, oh yeah. Pew, pew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys again. I tried to answer a lot of your questions today. Uh, we'll do some more. Uh, if y'all click the link in the description box, leave some in there. We can uh, definitely do that down there where it says Super Chat. Uh, my cash app is Carcino, K-A-R-C-E-N-O. And I'm out. <laughs>